So again, if you just came in here, we're happy that you're joining us. Okay, if you're, you're tuning in uh, online or you're listening uh, to this in a podcast, we're glad that you're uh, tuned in. Uh, this is actually the last part of this series. And my prayer is that we have been experiencing, not just learning, but we have been experiencing that grace that we've been talking about for the past few weeks. Okay, that grace that changes everything in our lives. And uh, if you will just backtrack a bit of what we have been learning, these are encounters of Jesus with these people. And Jesus has shown the grace of God in their lives. And their lives turned, so to speak. Their lives were reversed. It has changed everything in their lives. We, we knew that you know, in the life of the widow, week one. In the life of the sinful woman, week two. In the life of the blind man that was, um, that was healed by Jesus, week three. And as we land today, okay, as we, yeah, as if we're flying, okay, we're gonna land, okay, we're now landing, okay, so we're landing this series, and the one thing that I would want to pound at this point when it comes to the grace of God is, is that the grace of God is more than just a thing, an idea, or an event, okay, when I say that, of course, many of us, okay, who among you here, you, you prayed for grace, Lord, I need grace, okay, there's a visa interview, Lord, I, I need strength right now, you know, I, I have an exam, Lord, I need strength, I need grace right now, I'm gonna lay down my intention, <clears throat> okay, so, naubo talaga, okay, ito na yon, Raymart, okay, so, sorry, sorry, wala, wala, internal, internal, wala naman, okay, so, sorry, I have a lot of friends here in front, okay, so, you know, I need strength, okay, I, we get that, we pray for that, Wala, wala nga. Okay. Na-distract na ang lahat. Meron ba? Meron ba? Okay. Wala. Okay, wala. Okay. Pero, bro. Oh, yun. Okay, nag-agree. May nag-agree. Alright. But, yes, that's right in the sense that we pray for it. But what we see in, in, the, in this series and what we have been seeing in the scripture is that it's more than just an event. It's more than just a thing and an idea. It's actually a person. You know, John said it this way. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through. Jesus Christ. And when we talk about grace, it's not just grace, meaning, you know, it's just, you know, God is good, you know, God is accept, uh, accepting you, receiving you for who you are. There's also a sense of truth, which is, it, this is not a balance of it, you know, uh, there's 50% grace, 50% truth. No, no. It's all meshed up, okay, mashed up together. There's no balance between grace and truth. It's both. And according to John, it's not an idea. It's not an event, it's a person, which means it, when it comes to the truth of the scripture, when it comes to the truth uh, between us and God, you know, apart from God, we're nothing. Apart from God, we cannot do anything. Apart from God, you know, we're sinful. He's a holy God. The truth is we are far away from God. But he's also grace, which means despite of that truth, he reached out to us. Despite of that truth, he is with us. Despite of that truth, he loves you and me. You know this statement. You are fully known, yet fully loved. Ah, dito lang love. Okay, wala. You are fully known, yet fully loved. And, and that, that's basically grace and truth. And according to John, it's personified by Jesus. Whenever we talk about grace, we're not just talking about an event or an idea. I just want to pound that. It's actually walking with a person and as we land this series we're going to answer this question so when we talk about grace that changes everything and we've been seeing that for the past few weeks looking at the widow the sinful woman and the blind man so how does it change me 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 today and when you ask that question maybe you've been a christian for many years now you're you're thinking about the habits the behaviors that you have yeah i understand it is Grace, it is by grace I have been saved. Yes, okay. How many here you believe that you're saved and you're going to heaven? Okay, so, I don't know, I mean, I, 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 I believe, I would love to believe, okay, I would love to believe that you're raising your hands because of this truth, because of the faith that we have. You know, it's not by our own works according to the scripture, it's by the grace of God. You know, and we receive that by faith, okay? So that, that's the reason why we are, we are saved. But we all, we know that, but we look at our behavior, we look at our anger issues. Okay, don't look at your neighbor right now, okay? So you look at your, your, your temper, you, you look at how you deal with people, you look at your pride, you look at your arrogance, you look at how you celebrate at the failures of your friends. 
whenever they have failure, okay, and posted in the in Facebook, parang ilalay ko ba to? Wag. Okay, so uh, you know you're you're talking about you know you keep on doing the same habit every time after church. You know you you had all the experience, you know the scripture, you memorize everything, but you keep on falling back to the same habit, to the same thing that you all know. We all know. Here, here's, here's the thing, you, you feel defeated and you're asking this question, how does it really change me today, my, my character? Uh, don't raise your hand, but you know this. I know, Lord, I'm not perfect. How about? But you're saying that I'm not perfect, not from a factual standpoint, but you're saying that from a hopeless standpoint. Meaning, I'm not perfect but because you're saying, see, gusto kong bumait pero di ko ma... I mean, you know that, you know, in English, I want to change, uh-huh, uh-huh, but I can't. Okay, so, I want to change, but I can't. There's a song, there's a rap song for that, and that's a reality for you. Okay, Okay, so, and you're saying that in a hopeless standpoint, because you've been trying, but it's not working. Maybe that's why you're here, because you're trying, you're... There must be a way of me changing this habit. There must be a way. But you're hopeless because you feel that you're defeated in that sense. I know I've been a Christian. Maybe for some of you, this is not about your Christianity. You're not even thinking about Jesus. No, no. But you just know your life is messed up. You're finding a way to change your situation. And you realize it's not just the situation. It's you who needs to change. We're talking about grace that changes everything. How does that happen? Where does it start? You're in a hopeless mindset. And you feel like, yeah, Lord, then just have mercy on me. It, it's, it's, you're saying, Lord, maawa na lang kayo. Just control me along the way, you know, with my, with my you know, parenting issues, with my anger issues. Just control me along the way. And you're saying that because you've been trying, it's not working. But what if, what if I tell you today that there's hope? What if I tell you today that today, it is possible that God can turn all of these things, flip it, and say, you're changed. We're going to look at one story in the scripture between Jesus and the man named Zacchaeus. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it in Luke chapter 19. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 10. I'll be reading an ESV version. So I'm not going to show the verse in the screen, okay? Because we want to read together. But if you don't have a Bible, it's fine, okay? Okay lang naman po yun. Thank you again for, uh, again, being with us. But we just want to practice that, that we're bringing our own Bible, or at least you download your Bible app in your phones, okay? And then we can, we can practice reading with, okay? Together, okay? I'll be reading verse 1 to 10. I'll be reading an ESV version. Let's start. He entered Jericho and passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus! Hurry, come down, and I, for I must, I must stay at your house today. So he heard and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. Who's they? The people who are seeing the situation. According to them, he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold or four times. Verse 9, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. Last verse. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Lord Jesus, as we move on and finish off the series, speak to us today. Illumine your word. I know, God, that for many of us here, we're moving forward in our faith, but there's some hiccups, struggles. And I know even that part, that grace is so strong, it can change us today. And I pray, God, for miraculous things to happen 
and unfold right now in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay. So again, just a bit of what's happening. I, if, if you've been with us for the past few weeks, Jesus has been traveling from town to town. And Jesus has been speaking, teaching about the kingdom of God. He's preaching the kingdom of God. He's also uh, healing, doing miraculous things, okay? So he started from Capernaum downwards, going. Last week, we, 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 we read that, that, that he was about to enter Jericho. And then the blind man came, okay? So, and then Jesus uh, have encountered that blind man, and then he healed that blind man. Now, he has already entered Jericho, and he met this man named... Okay. Zacchaeus, okay? He entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Bakala na pansin if you've noticed for the past weeks, look was not naming some of the characters that Jesus was encountering. The widow, the son who died, we don't know the name, the sinful woman. It was actually named in other Gospels. Uh, even the blind man, okay, last week we talked about that. According to Luke, he's a blind man, but in the book of Mark, he's named Bartimaeus, okay? But for some reason, Luke took the time to name this man, Zacchaeus. There was a man, and according to Luke, he was researching this. Okay, who is this small guy again that Jesus encountered? Ah, his name was Zacchaeus, and the name meant this. Okay, the meaning of his name meant this. He is actually pure. The, the name Zacchaeus meant pure or innocent, or in other translation, it could be understood that he is a good person or a righteous person. That's why he wrote that. Oh, ooh, that's a good name, Zacchaeus. Okay, maybe some of your son's name could be named Zach. Zacchaeus, okay? Because pure or innocent. Ang ganda, di ba? Okay? But here's the oxymoron. Oxymoron. Spell. Contrast. Contrast na lang, okay? Contrast to what he was describing for the name Zacchaeus, pure and innocent. But according to Luke, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. A chief tax collector and was rich. And if, if you would try to research on the culture then, at that, that, that time, you know, in their, in their mindset, there were people who are considered or called sinners. Pag sinabing sinners, these are people who have fallen short in terms of the law of Moses, the law of the elders, okay? You're a prostitute, murderer, uh, you, you steal, you know, you dishonor your parents, you have issues in the sacrifices in the temple. Sinners. You have to sacrifice, you have to repent, and all these These, you are sinners. Oh, by the way, there are some people who are worse than that. They're called tax collectors. Oh, grabe talaga. No? So, merong sinners, okay? By the way, some people are worse than that. They're called tax collectors. Why? Because they're not just sinners, they betrayed their country, Israel. Because according to them, it's, it, it's as if they have sold themselves to the, to the Roman Empire to collect Biro mo, biro mo. Sarili mong, sarili mong kabayan. Okay, kabayan talaga. Nagtagalog na tayo. Sarili mong kasama sa bayan. Okay? Hinuhut-hutais mo of, your, of their mouth. Hut-hutais talaga. You collect money. And then you give them to what? To the Roman Empire, their enemy. And a big portion of that as well, a little bit of that maybe, goes to them. So there's, they're, they're not just they're not, when you talk about tax collector, they're, they're not just, you know, sinners. They're, they're people who, are, who betrayed them. You know, maybe in, in effect, no, they're, they're saying, you know, you're not even a Jew. We disown you for what you're doing. And here's the thing. Here's the clincher. He's not just a tax collector. He's the chief. So tax collectors, okay, parang in our context, you know, there's a lot of corrupt people, you know, whether in the business or oh, whatever uh, sector of the society, we, we don't like them or we have ill feelings against them. Oh, but you know what? This guy, Zacchaeus, he's not just the corrupt. He is the chief corrupt. You're talking about, <clears throat> okay, we have, our, we have stories, you know, we, we have news in our minds, you know, we, we recall, mm, that maybe, parang siyang si, okay, he's the chief. And most probably, here's the thing, I was just uh, imagining this, uh, was, you know, it's like, why would Luke take time to really describe this? Because maybe uh, his name would be like a joke for them. And maybe he has been receiving some mockeries in that sense. Ha, pure. Yeah, Zacchaeus, pure. Chief tax collector, pure. Yes, he's pure. Pure evil. 
Mm, pure evil, you know, pure, pure monster, okay, or innocent, you know, innocent, yes, innocent in the good things, but you know, he's so professional in the corruption. So, you know, maybe he could have been receiving all of those, you know, name, name stuff, you know, you're, you're this, you're that, and most probably he has accepted that. Most probably he's, he has learned to receive that and accept that. And most probably there are also some people who accept him, but these are the people who, the reason why they accept, they accept him is because they need him. Not because they love him. Mahal mo ba ako dahil kailangan mo ako? O kailangan mo ako dahil mahal mo ako? Yung mga na drama, parang... And for him, the reason why he has people around him is because of the people who need him. But if they don't have it, if they can't get it from him, then he's nobody. And maybe he was thinking about this. Yeah! I've learned to accept that. Yeah, you can cry in your homes, okay? You know, you, I'm, I'm the bad guy. I'm the betrayer. I'm the chief tax collector. God hates me. I'm going to hell. Yeah. You cry in your homes. I'm going to cry in my Lamborghini. Okay, mga gana, okay? You cry in your homes. You cry in your restroom. I'm going to cry in my restroom with a golden Inodoro. Okay, so, you know, at least I have my stuff with me. I was just imagining it. I mean, maybe he has that a lot of conversations in his lifetime until he realized none of those stuff really matters because he's a human being. There's a big hole in a human being's heart that no stuff, no likes, no success, or whatever that is that we try to collect in this world can actually fill up. And that's what he is experiencing at that point. Yeah, he's so rich. And maybe that's who you, who you are right now. I mean, if, if you're going to talk about, you know, for the past three weeks, okay, widow, blind man, you know, sinful woman, it feels like we can relate with them because, oh, they're so needy. I, I need something from God. And then here you are, you're saying, I'm okay. Yeah, problematic sila. Okay, but I'm okay. I, I, you know, if someone asks you, do you have anything to, that we can pray for? Mm, not much. Okay, I, I, and I'm not saying you're wrong by saying that. But you're just there. You're just there in that portion where I'm fine. I'm fine. But you understand deep inside you, there's, some, there's something missing. There's something that is lacking. That's why for Zacchaeus, he started seeking to see. Who Jesus was. And that word seeking is not like a seeking, like I need a savior. No, no, it's not like that. He's, he's not seeking like, oh, I need someone to save me from my... No, no, it's not that kind of a seeking. But he was seeking because he has been hearing, you know, lessons maybe from the teachings of Jesus. You know, he has heard maybe some of the, the miraculous things that he has done. So he was seeking. Is he... Is he really the person that the people around me are claiming? Maybe that's who you are right now. You're casually, yeah, I'm just checking around. You know, I'm, it's my first time here. You know, medyo corny lang yung taas-taas kamay. Okay, so but, uh, okay, so, uh, mm, yeah. You're casually seeking. God has something for you as well. But when I was reading this and I was discovering, ah, maybe he's not just casually seeking. There's something deeper than this because he was seeking Jesus, but the problem is, on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature, which means, according to some historians, he's like four feet below maybe. So this is kind of small. So he ran on ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him. So now I observe, maybe, yes, casual, not really to look for God and, you know, I need God, a Savior, but maybe he's coming from a position of desperation. Because this climbing up of the tree is a very undignified way of doing things. Which means this, he actually is a rich guy. Remember that, okay? He's a rich man, okay? He could have used his money and get some people and say, hire people, you know, pave the way, make way to Prince Zaki, okay? So he could have done that, okay? Because he's rich, he could have just thrown coins away, people will just be dispersed, and then he will have a pathway towards Jesus. He could have... But why climb up and say, who is this guy? What's happening inside his heart? What's the longing that he is experiencing that caused him, you know what? I cannot get past through this crowd, but I'm going to do something that uh, I, I haven't done for a while. I'm going to do it. 
in an undignified way in that sense. I'm willing to shame myself just to seek an answer. Who is this Jesus that the people are talking about? But the good news is this. You know, he was doing that because he's trying to fill up or answer some questions in his heart. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have a deep longing, a deep question. But up until now, you're still looking for answers. And you're here, you're thinking, so is Jesus really the answer to that? Zacchaeus is about to find out if Jesus is really the answer. And maybe you are about to find out why you're here and why you're hearing this story. When Jesus came to the place, let me just pause there because whenever the gospel talks about Jesus coming into a story, something great is about to happen. You agree with that? Oh, okay. Tapusin natin. Okay, so whenever Jesus enters into a story, something good is about to happen. But I understand that whenever Jesus also comes into, in, in, into a story, he, he shakes the, what do you call that, the, the comfort zones of the people in that sense. And most probably that's who we are as well. Now, you know what? <laughs> In, in my darkness, in my, in my lifestyle, in my habits, you know, I've been doing this for many years. I've been, you know, going around in this issue, in this struggle that I have for many years. And then a shed of light from the grace of God hits you. And then you become uncomfortable, checking you. This is the real condition of your heart. And at, at one point in your life, you have said, I don't like this. Lord, I don't want you to change where I am. But then you also realize, just like what Zacchaeus is about to realize, that, that that light that God is giving Zacchaeus is also the same light that you might be needing to really experience the change that will set you free. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, okay? Zacchaeus, hurry up, come down, for I must stay at your house. I'll highlight a bit of that in a while. When I was reading that, I was thinking, was there a meeting prior to this that he was able to name him Zacchaeus? Have you ever noticed that? Like, glalakad ako, no? Raymart. Okay, so far, of course I know Raymart, okay? We, 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 we're, we've been together for how many years now? But imagine I'm, I'm walking, John, Male, no? Mali. Okay, mali. Uh, so, alam mo, alam, parang, ano, ro, anong name mo? Ha? Riel. Oh, yun. Anyway, so, mali, di ba? So, you, you see, I'm, I'm making a point here. Okay, I'm making a point here. I'm thinking about a natural cause, how he called up, called up his name. Like, he, you know, he, he came in a town of many people, Jericho, and then all of a sudden, he, he saw a man climbing up the tree, and then he came, and he saw Zacchaeus. I was just thinking, just to think about, you know, just to explain things in my mind. You know, maybe the, the disciples then are, you know, you know, in, I mean, si Jesus habang glala ka, di ba? Si mga tao niya, mga, howie boys, okay? Whoa, okay. And then, <laughs> howie boys. And then Peter might be having a list at that point. Jesus, you know what? We're entering Jericho right now. And he are, here are the famous people in Jericho. Just in case someone, uh, you know, climb up the tree, that guy is named Zacchaeus, okay? Just in case, okay? So, do they have a list? Like oh these these guys are the these guys are the famous guys here in Jericho, okay. Just in case you, you might meet them. I don't think so. There was no list. There is something in that calling of the name that is so prophetic, and that is so supernatural. You know, here's what the thing here's the thing that's happening right now. Remember the definition of his name. It meant pure and innocent. There's a powerful thing that Jesus is doing right now in the life of Zacchaeus. That when he saw the name, uh, when he saw that guy climbing up the tree, prophetically speaking, supernaturally speaking, Jesus saw that small guy who climbed up the tree. Not as defined by the people and looking at them and looking at him and looking at the past of what he has done. But Jesus is calling calling, calling upon the name of that guy based on who he is in Christ. Get what I'm saying? When 
something powerful is happening here. That when, when, when Jesus spoke the name Zacchaeus, maybe that was the first time that he has heard his name without judgment. With the real definition, pure, innocent, righteous. And maybe he was in the tree. Me? Ako ba yon? Sabi ni Jesus, hindi yung ibon, yung ibon, okay? Yung ibon na katabi mo, okay? I mean, he, he was so, something in him welled up and something in him came, came to life and, uh, and according to, to look, so he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. You know, here's what happened to, to Zacchaeus and I believe this is what God is actually doing to each and every one of us. Jesus called the name and Jesus is actually dealing with Zacchaeus not on the basis of his past, not on the basis of what he has done, but on the basis of who he is in the Lord. That is his name. You know what? Maybe some of you, you feel like you're asking, so how can I change? How can I, so how can I turn away from all of these things I'm struggling with? Jesus is calling your name. This is not who you are. I'm not defining you but what, by what you have done in the past. I'm not defining you but by, by, what, by what people are telling you who you are. I'm defining you by who you are in my sight. Zacchaeus, come down. Hurry up. I must stay. There is power when God calls upon your name on the basis of how God sees you. You're asking, God, how can I change? It starts there. When God starts to call upon who you are, not on the basis of what you've done, but on the basis of how God sees you. And that, that, it doesn't stop there. It says there, I must stay in your house. There's one thing, there's power in the calling of God, in the life of Zacchaeus, in our lives. And there's also power when Jesus said, I must stay, which means, you know, my presence, I will stay with you. In other translation, I will abide with you. Remember that verse, abide in me, and I will abide in you, and you will bear much fruit. At last, I must stay. There's something in the presence of God as well that changes you and me. That God is not just calling you from afar. Ray Mark, this is not who you are. You are a holy God. No, 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 no. God is calling this guy. Ray Mark, sorry, example lang, okay? Not planned, okay? This is who you are, but I'm not, just talk, talk, I'm not just defining or redefining who you are. I'm gonna walk with you. I'm not just redefining who you are. I'm not just telling you, oh, this is now your identity. I'm not just saying that from afar. I'm, I'm saying that from an up-close perspective. I must stay with you. I will stay with you. Because you will not just be redefined. I will walk with you. So he hurried and came down. Something happens. Something happens when we, we receive the voice of God and we also experience the presence of God that changes you and me. That's why I'm telling you, this is more than just an idea. This is a person that we're walking with. Some of us, were struggling. I'm doing my best. That's the problem. You're doing it. But God is telling you, stop working on it. Let me define you first. Let's start there. Because many of us, okay, many of us, we feel that, you know, for, for me to, to start the change, I must do something. And that's really how the world does it, right? I mean, for you to receive a result, start working. But for the grace of God, grace changes your being first before your behavior. The reason why we're struggling is, is because we put the behavior first before the being. You know, if I do this, if I do that, if I do that and then you, you find yourself broken and you don't ha- know how to fix yourself. <laughs> but as Jesus redefines Zacchaeus, he's also redefining you and saying, you know what, this is who you are. You're a woman of God. This is who you are. You're a man of faith. This is who you are, holy man. This is who you are. The strength of the Lord is with you. This is who you are, healed. This is who you are, man of faith. Who am I? 
may be a good question right now. Who am I in the presence of God? You know, the enemy would want to let you think, you know what? The enemy would want you to think, you know what? You know, yeah, God is with you, God is for you, but you know, he's kind of, he's kind of in this with your inconsistency. He's kind of pissed with your in- inconsistency. So, you know what? Here's the thing. You have to be faithful with the little things, you know, just be do good. You know, it, it sounds biblical, right? Be faithful with the little things. Do good. It doesn't mean it came from the Bible. It's coming from the Word of God. Because even this, okay, the Scripture is clear. Satan can actually use Scriptures. Have you, do you remember that story of the temptation of Jesus? Because the Scripture says, okay, so, okay, not, okay. We have to discern. Is this thing that I'm hearing empowering me to walk with God or disempowering me to walk with God and empower me to just do my works. Who are you in the presence of God? You're a beautiful woman, man of faith, man of strength. Who are you in the presence of God? And here's what happened. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. The people then who did not understand start grumbling. Why? Because he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner because Jesus here has committed, uh, you know, guilty by association. You know, oh, because Jesus walked with this tax collector, chief tax collector, oh, by the way, he's eating uh, the food of of a corrupted official. We have a problem with that because we deal with people according to their past. We deal with people with, with what they do. Right? But the reason why God has no problem with sinners and tax collectors is because He deals with them according to how God sees them. Tahimik tayo lahat, no? Oh, God, teach, teach us. God deals with every one of us not on the basis of what you've done in the past because if He did, none of us will be worthy to be in His kingdom. Imagine if He dealt with your past and my past and our present mistakes. But you know what? The good news is this. The grace of God deals, deals you in the sense of how God sees you. God looks at you. You are a new creation. The old is gone. Pakisabi to, the new has. That's who you are right now. And when Zacchaeus stood, and this is what happened. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, the Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. There is a transition from who he was to what he's about to do. And if I defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. You know, we, we see this verse as, wow, grabe, the repentance. Wow, the amount that he's about to give. Ooh, fourfold. I mean, he went beyond what was required. I mean, the defrauding part, I restore it fourfold. That's the law. That's the law. But half of my goods I give to the poor, that's, that's going beyond him. And when we look at it, we, we look at it at, as, Oh, wow, he, he's given a lot, a lot of money. Woo! That's the grace of God. Mm, a part of it, yes. But one thing that we, we need to see here is not just about the, the giving back as a, as, a, as a restitution, but his desire to restore relationships when he starts giving back things in fourfold. See, he could have done it this way. Okay, I'm just giving back to you all the things that I have taken. I'm sorry. Let's call it quits. Wag yun na akong pakilaman, Christian na ako. Peace. Okay, so he could have just done it that, that way. But he's saying it's more than that. Because the grace of God changes our response in life. But this is not just about, you know, I'm just trying to be clean. The kingdom of God tells us, we restore relationships. Wow. That's why some of you, you're struggling in relationships. Not that you're single, you're trying to find a, 
partner, okay? Iba yon, ibang struggle yon, okay? Walang natawari, Mart, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but I just wanna say this. Some of you, you or you know some people in a live-in situation. You're not married yet, but you're living in. And you understand you're a believer. You've been, you've been walking with God, but there's a situation. And he, here's the thing. If, if the issue is that I cannot get married, why? Because of finances. The pastors are here. We, we would like to talk with you about that because we have heard a lot of testimonies about people who desired to transition and to change everything in their lives. Not because of what they can do, but because of what God has done in, in their lives. And they got married after making that decision. You know what? We, we, we want to honor God with our relationship. But the issue lang there is, you know, we don't have money. We don't know where to get married. And all that. We're trying. We're looking for ways. Pastor Fidel, Pastor Jun Jin, 7 p.m. will help you with that. Me as well. We would like to pray for you and lead you to the pathway. But grace is not an easy out, isn't it? It's not just the grace that says, you know, ooh, I'm going to heaven, that's it. No, 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 no. The same grace that saved you is the same grace that enables you to respond in life, even if it's a difficult response. Some of you, you have to give up that immoral relationship. You know that. So you, you have to give up that contract because you know that's illegal. Oh, Lord, six digits. Isn't that a blessing? It will bless my family. But the Holy Spirit is tugging your heart and saying, it's, it's not coming from me. But what Jesus is telling you right now is this. It's not that don't do that or don't do this because that's wrong. You're going to hell. No, no, no. What he's saying right now by the grace of God is this. That's not who you are. That's not who you are. Oh, that's not who you are. You're my child. That's not who you are. You know, we feel like we can't do it. Why? Because, oh no, I, oh, no, I feel guilty because the Lord says it's bad. No, no, no. The conversation changes when we talk about the grace of God because the grace of God speaks not on the basis of your past, but on the basis of how God sees you. That's not who you are. You're a woman of righteousness man of faith you can move on you're a man of purity and holiness that is who you are and Jesus said to him today salvation has come it has manifested it has been seen it's not that it's about to enter no 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 he's saying you see this guy this is what salvation is all about that's that response it's what it what it meant to be saved that is the response of a saved man. Since he is also a son of Abraham, which is actually a reinstatement. Because God is not dealing with him in the basis of he's a tax collector or a chief. But he's a son of the promise of faith that will produce righteousness. Why is he doing this? For the son of man. A divine address to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords came to seek and save. You know, if, it, if it's just, you know, just dealing with us in terms of our past, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Let's stop church. We will all be guilty and we're done. We will just try our best. But praise God. He came to seek and save me. Praise God, He came to seek and save you. That's why we can stand. We're going to take our communion in a short while. I'd like to ask the, the, the music team to just come. We will, we will worship God in a short while. Remain, remain seated. But here's what I want you to do. As the music team comes in, let this be a time of, of God speaking to you. If you may, close your eyes, if you may. And here's what, what's going to happen. You know, the ushers will be passing on the, the elements as the worship team leads us in the worship. But here's the thing. As we worship God while seated down, if you may just remove the titles that you have, 
you're a parent, you're a mom, you're a busy mom, you're a busy father, you're a boss, you're a lawyer, you know who you are, you know what you have been doing, you're a busy guy, you're a busy person. But God would want to deal with you, would want to speak to you, not on the basis of what you do or what you've been doing, but He wants to deal with you on the basis of how He sees you. That you're my child. And I want you to rest in my presence. For in my presence, there's peace, there's joy, there's freedom, there's deliverance. Shackles are being broken. Sickness are being healed. Struggles are being loosened. All of these things fades away in my presence. If you may just think about that, you know, let God speak to you. My son, my daughter, I'm speaking to you right now. the verse, this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let's partake of the bread right now we remember what Christ has done on the cross his body was broken so that our brokenness will be taken by him in his wholeness who he is will be imputed on me, on each and every one of you. That's why you will never believe the lie that says 
you are born this way, God created you that way. It's not true. Sin broke us this way. The world has broken us this way. But God is redefining. Remember what He has done on the cross that redefined you and me. Who are you? On the face of that cross, when He sees us and says, It is finished. That's the body of Christ broken for us. The scripture also says, This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all partake of the Lord's cup. Amazing how God or how Jesus called Zacchaeus pure. And not on the basis of what he has done. But supernaturally, he called forth the great destiny. And that's who you and, and I in the presence of God. On that cross when he shed his blood. Those who repented and those who submitted, surrendered their lives to him. God has a word for you. Pure. Holy. Righteous. Not on the basis of your records, but on the basis of what Christ has done on the cross. Let me just pray right now. Lord, thank you. As we end this series, oh God, this is a reminder for each and every one of us. You deal with us not on the basis of our past. This is what you have done to Zacchaeus. But you deal with us on the basis of what you see in us, in you. You said in your word, if anyone is in Christ, I pray God for everyone who is in Christ right now. They will walk in the strength of the Lord, in the victory of Christ. If this is you, you're saying, I haven't surrendered my life to the Lord. Please raise your hand. Please, I just want to pray for you. Thank you, those, thank you for those hands raised. Or raised right now. Thank you. Thank you. You can, yeah, you can, keep it raised. Keep it raised. I just want to see. Oh God, you see these hands raised as a sign of surrender. You're redefining first their hearts and their identity. Their past does not define them. You define them by your love and by the great destiny that they, ha- they have in you. God, thank you. You're releasing them to freedom. You're releasing them, God, from the enemies of God to become children of God. Lord, thank you, God, for those who raise their hands, God. They will walk in the pathway you have given them. Bless them in Jesus' name. You now put your hands down. I just want to pray a prayer of blessing. If you need a blessing for the week, if you need something right now, healing, restoration, you can raise up your hand. Lord, thank you for everyone who's here in this room. Many of us are looking for things that we need in life. But thank you, first and foremost, you filled up our ultimate need. Our hearts being filled by you. But Lord, right now, I'm asking that you would also fill up their needs, their wants as well, even for their requests for provisions, their requests for, for healing God. Some of them, they have a loved one in the, in the ICU, in, in the hospital right now. We, we're claiming healing. In Jesus' name, we're claiming restoration of the families, God. We're claiming favors, God, in the examination, interview, jobs. God, we call for prosperity to come forth to each and every one of us here in this room. This is your grace that changes everything. We bless your name, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen, amen.